Hey guys, so today we're filming a Peterborough ice rink and we're going to be taking a look at how to take a one-timer for everyone that's been requesting this video. So with a one-timer, the main point that you need to be able to learn and practice is going to be timing. Timing is everything with a one-timer and we're going to be taking a look at how to execute one today. So when you're taking a look at the shot, like all of the shots that we take a look at in hockey, we need to take a look at our athletic stance or hockey stance on the ice. Now, of course, with a one-timer, you might be moving, you might not necessarily be keeping still, but it's still important to be able to keep the basics in check, which is going to be keeping a low base to be able to have good control over your body and remembering to use those inside edges while you're taking this shot. You also keep, want to keep in mind the basic points about keeping your chest up, your head up and, and your shoulders square to give you the best level of control over your body on the ice. So to begin, we're going to be taking a look at your hand placement. Like all of the shots that we've shown you previously, you want to be able to use that forearms trick to be able to figure out where your bottom hand's going to sit on the shaft of your stick. Because we're taking a shot, especially the one-timer, you're going to want to choke up a little bit further down because you're really going to need to utilize the flex of the stick to be able to get the most power out of this shot. It's also crucial that you keep a very tight or strong grip with your hands on the stick because the puck's going to be coming at you with a lot of momentum that you're going to need to be able to counteract to be able to control where the puck goes and to be able to generate the most power and momentum out of the shot that you take. Moving on to the position of the puck, of course it's going to be moving but you're still going to need to worry about where it's positioned in relation to your body. Depending on your shooting preference, this might be a little bit different, but we prefer it to have the puck sort of around the middle of our stance or towards the front skate in our stance. That gives us the most amount of space and the best puck positioning for us to be able to impact the ice a few inches before the puck to get that stick to flex and generate the most power out of the shots that we take. From there we're going to be looking at the positioning of our bodies. Now this is going to be quite a tricky thing that you're going to need to practice that goes hand in hand with the timing that we mentioned earlier. With the positioning of your body, in a game of hockey it's very very rare that you're going to get a perfect pass that's going to allow you to take the perfect one-timer. You're going to notice that players, especially in the NHL and other players that you might notice on the ice that take um, one-timers, are going to be adjusting their bodies constantly depending on the position or the angle that the puck's coming in towards them. This is going to involve using the inside edges of your skates to be able to adjust your body to put yourself in the best position that you can to take full advantage of the pass that you're getting in and to be able to utilise the most amount of power and momentum that you can get out of your stick in your body to give you a nice one-timer. So when you're practicing your one-timers on your own, there's a few training aids that you can use to be able to do that. Things like the Pass Masters and also the Easy Puck one-timers. There'll be a link down below in the video description so you can see what those are. Another good way to practice one-timers on your own is to skate backwards with the puck and then wind up and take a slap shot. But if you're practicing them with a buddy and you want to get used to being able to get the timing right and the body position correct, start off with having nice slow passes just so you can get used to being able to think about what you're going to do before you do it. As you get better with fast passes, if you're worried about missing those or you want to get the timing right, a really good tip for that is as soon as the puck leaves your buddy's stick, that's when you want to be getting ready to wind up. So there's no good of, of, of them passing the puck to you and then you're getting ready to wind up because if it's coming in nice and fast, you're going to miss the puck. So remember to get your stick blade um, or your stick right up in the air as soon as that puck leaves your buddy's blade to get you in the best position to be able to utilize the timing and execute the shot properly. Along with being able to utilize the flex of your stick by impacting the ice a few inches before the puck, another really good way to be able to generate lots of power and speed in these shots is to lean into the shot or sit into the shot. You'll notice a lot of players go nice and low while they're getting into their shots. They practically sit on their shots to be able to really get the power out of that stick to be able to get it to flex. You'll also notice with some of the NHL players, they'll tend to drop down onto one knee as they take a shot. Now again, that helps with getting a lot more power and flex out of the stick to be able to get the puck to move much quicker and more powerfully. But also, if you're up close to the net, it's a really good way of being able to get a little bit of height to be able to get the puck up high in the net. So remember to keep in mind that one-timers aren't the most accurate of shots out there. Of course, some players are more gifted than others, but it's definitely important to remember that while you're thinking about what types of shot to take. In terms of aiming, it's the same as any other shot on the ice. You want to be able to follow through towards the direction that you want to aim the puck in. So if you want to go up high, you want to follow through high, keeping the tips in mind about dropping down onto one knee, getting nice and low. And if you want to go low, you follow through low. With the one-timer, of course the puck's going to be moving, but try not to constantly stare at where the puck is. You need to glance at the puck because you need to be able to see where it is so you get the timing right and also to get your body position right. But of course you want to be able to see where you're aiming the puck. So you'll notice a lot of players will be glancing at the puck at the same time they'll be glancing at the goal. Quick glances in both directions to work out where the puck is to get your timing and also to see where the target is that you're trying to shoot at. The last point is of course remember to utilize those inside edges during the shot and of course open up your hips towards the direction that you're shooting in to be able to keep the momentum going forward and giving you the most power out of every one timer that you take on the ice. If you haven't already noticed guys, I'm wearing a hockey tutorial jersey. These are purely for support and non-profit. If you're a hockey lover and you want to support us and pick one up, there'll be a link down below so you can get your own. You'll be able to add your own country or nationality flag to the jersey, select your own name and number to add so you can personalise them.
Thanks for watching, guys. A massive thank you to Planet Ice in Peterborough for allowing us to shoot this video on their ice rink. Stay tuned till next time, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.